Hi everyone, this is Steve here from My Crypto World. Welcome back to another episode regarding crypto and digital assets. Now today we're going to be talking about the Theta Network as well as looking at the cycle patterns that have happened in the market over the last week, which is something we do on this channel every single week. If you like the content, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, smash that like button and help us grow our channel further. If you're wanting more information about digital assets and cryptocurrency, why don't you subscribe to our channel so you can get daily or weekly updates as they come out to you. I do my best to put out content at least two to three times a week, uh, although I have had a bit of a hiatus over the last couple of weeks just due to a busy work schedule. So let's have a look at the Theta Network and the market cycles as they are right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's channel. Uh, my name's Steve, as I said in the introduction, and let's have a look at what's going on in the market. So I've been uh, away for the last couple of weeks, uh, partly holiday, partly work. Um, so let's have a look now and see where we are with the cycles. Now, normally I kick this off with where things are with the total crypto market cap. I'm not gonna do that today. We're gonna have a look first at the S&P 500 because um, as you will see, the S&P 500 at the moment is in free fall. Uh, it has dropped dramatically from just above 4,300 points all the way down to 3,600. Uh, and it is making what's known as a small double bottom here. Uh, I don't know that it will go much further, but it may. Uh, and the reason why I'm highlighting that is um, while the rest of the markets are still in free fall, uh, certainly the property market over in Australia and I believe in other countries around the world, um, is uh, dropping uh, maybe significantly, maybe not. Um, the crypto market space itself, in my investment opinion, has already had its downfall. Uh, it's already had its move down. We'll just go back to the total market cycle now. And we can see that while the S&P 500 has dropped dramatically, not much has happened in the crypto space over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's moved from uh, just above one trillion down to just below one trillion. So still a 200 billion, uh, 200 billion dollar move but it's insignificant in comparison to the rest of the global markets and this is quite common when um, when markets go into a downfall downfall or they go up um, normally the alternative or maybe what's classed as the more riskier assets will move first before the rest of the market and that's what we've seen here so the crypto market has dropped significantly from uh, all the way back up here back in november 2021 uh, all the way down to where we are now. Uh, it moves first because it's more of a riskier asset and most people when they get nervous will remove their funds and their investments out of the riskier assets to put them into more stable um, asset classes. Whether it be stocks or commodities, bonds, you know, gold, uh, silver, all that sort of stuff. But they tend to uh, get out of that first. So while the rest of the market has dropped, I feel that we have found our floor in the, um, in the crypto space. And that is not just reflected in the total market cap, which is what we're looking at at the moment. It's also reflected in many of the crypto um, coins themselves when we go and have a look at their charts. So we have a look at the big one, which is Bitcoin. Uh, you can see here um, it's broken uh, below the, its previous resistance level. Uh, it's trading just under $20,000, but it hasn't dropped below this low that happened here back in June 2022 with a uh, low there of $17,000 or just we'll call it for round numbers, uh, $18,000. Uh, it's between 18 and it's about $17,500. Um, it's trading right on a resistance level that happened all the way back in uh, November 2020 um, and it hasn't dropped below that even though again the S&P 500 and other world markets have certainly fallen. So to me this gives me greater hope and strength that the market, the crypto market in particular has found its bottom and that we may start to see uh, uh, some movement in the upward areas over the next coming weeks, months and years. Now, my timing for all of this, you know, it's incredibly hard to predict. You could go on to numerous uh, news articles, numerous YouTube channels, and a lot of people are trying to predict that the market's going to drop further or that it's going to start rising from now. My honest opinion is it'll probably continue to go sideways for a number of months before it finds some stability uh, and that we get more investors coming back into the market um, itself. 
Now Ethereum, um, very similar. Uh, it has dropped. It's certainly went above its uh, resistance line of sixteen hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Uh, it's come back down from that now. Even though with the Vassal hard fork uh, reducing its energy supply by ninety-eight percent or more, um, it still uh, has has actually fallen. But it hasn't gone below its previous low of eight hundred and seventy-nine dollars. So for me, this uh, represents incredible buying opportunity. Cardano, if we have a look at Cardano at the moment, it's already had its fall. It's gone from $3 all the way down to $0.45, cents, where, is, where it is at the moment. And despite what happens in the rest of the market, I don't see Cardano falling further at the moment. It has now traveled so far sideways from May all the way through to where we are now in September. It's a massive sideways movement. It's shown great strength. It's right on top of a resistance line, which happened back in January 2021. And again, it's already making its move. Now, what might happen in the market over the next months is that a recession will be announced, possibly, um, in multiple global markets. Uh, but the truth is, a recession has already happened. Uh, and this is quite common if you go back in time and in history and look at the stock markets or any other market for that matter when countries or um, governments uh, announce that a recession is in place you will find that they announce it right at the bottom of the market dip uh, so I think that that's what might be happening at the moment we're just waiting for the official announcements to happen and from there you'll start to see growth come back into the, uh, the particular markets or particular coins Bitcoin Cash, very similar. You can see it's almost the same pattern as Cardano. It is just moving sideways over the last couple of months. Uh, Polkadot, similar. It's right, just trading nicely against its bottom band here uh, without much movement, uh, you know, a little bit of movement up and down, but sitting nicely at around about $6. It seems to have averaged around about $7.50 over the last couple of months. But again, with the S&P dropping, Cardano, uh, uh, not uh, Cardano, sorry, Polkadot has barely moved an inch. Um, Engine Coin, the same thing. Uh, it hit its resistance level a little while ago, way back in uh, August, so about four weeks ago, uh, and has pretty much um, still traded above its all-time low uh, and hasn't moved much further from that. Again, we're going to see a sideways movement. Um, Hollow Chain, the same thing. Uh, this is uh, we'll blow this up a little bit so we can see it. Again, you can see the sideways movement that is happening in the market on multiple coins. IOTA is the same. Uh, Chainlink is exactly the same. Uh, MANA is exactly the same. Uh, MATIC, which is Polygon, has moved up strongly, but now moving sideways at the moment. And again, uh, if you have a look at where it's moving, it's right on a resistance point that happened way back in May 2021. Uh, it tested that resistance point in July 2021 was down there for a day and then shot straight back up through it. So quite a strong resistance level where that is at the moment. Um, and this is a way I think things will go over the next coming weeks and months. I think we're going to be seeing more sideways movement. But what we're actually seeing, even though it's boring, is we're seeing stability come back to the market, which is what we all want. So for me, in my investment opinion, this produces incredible buying opportunities for us right now to either dollar cost average in or if you haven't bought in the market before, you might want to consider looking at some of the uh, alternate coins that are out there that might be uh, give you a good bang for your buck. That's not the discount. Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum as the market leaders, they certainly will produce good uh, value over time for any uh, astute investor. Uh, and remember on this channel, I'm talking more about investing, not so much trading. I'm not really a trader nowadays. It's more of a long-term investment buy and hold strategy for me um, so that's where we are at the market at the moment uh, I don't know that uh, we're going to see a great deal of um, increase before Christmas I'd like to think we are but I kind of feel that this might be something that will see the market take off sometime after the new year in 2023 but I've been proven wrong before and if it moves up before that then that's all well and good as well so let's jump over now uh, to some news regarding uh, Theta, which is what I wanted to cover. And we're going to kick it off with the Theta Validator unstaking to accelerate the future ecosystem growth. So Theta have put out this article. Um, it was published on the Theta network uh, and it goes on to state. And everyone knows on this channel that Theta is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, altcoin. 
um, and there are a number of reasons why. Um, but first of all, the article states that uh, the past several years, Theta Labs has unstaked certain amounts of Theta tokens from the project treasury in order to fund the ecosystem growth, decentralize the Theta protocol and expand enterprises validators up to 25, including Google, Samsung, Sony, CAA and others. These efforts have been successful with an exp uh, explosion of new Theta projects emerging in the past year from replay video payments, tracking and their new platform Reward TV, which we'll talk about in another article in a moment. To projects like Passaways, the Secret Pineapple Society, to decentralised ticketing services like MetaPass. Despite the market struggling this year in crypto around the world, Theta ecosystem remains in a strong position for future development and increased adoption globally. Theta Labs plans to unstake a small portion of its treasury, 15 million Theta, out of the total $165 million treasury staked to accelerate the momentum in core protocol development, community development, and user adoption for further to further establish Theta as a leading blockchain for video, media, and entertainment. These funds will be allocated to technology and business development, meta chain ecosystem incentives, future Theta hackathon prize funding, marketing and other ecosystem initiatives. This initiative also continues moving Theta, uh, the network Theta toward full decentralization. Now this is the key here, to full decentralization with the Theta Labs reducing its staking percentage from 27% to 24% of the total Theta staked among all validators and guardians. Combined with the lowering of the uh, validator node staking requirements down to 200,000K and the addition of many new e uh, validator nodes, these steps are ensuring that Theta ecosystem uh, becomes increasingly decentralized and least re reliant on the Theta labs over time. So they're literally giving their stuff away for other people to handle so that if the worst thing happens and Theta Labs uh, pulls a pin or they blow their servers or something crazy, the ecosystem itself is safe over time. So this is a really good a really good insight into what they've been doing. Now, uh, earlier this year, I put out a video uh, just explaining how important what it was when you're going to go and invest into anything, but in particular into alternate coins, to do your research and what you want to look for is companies that are doing a lot of groundbreaking work while the market has been falling. Um, that's probably the most important key at the moment. Um, and Theta is certainly one of those. Cardano is another one, Ethereum is another one. Um, but Theta has certainly been putting in the hours to develop this ecosystem beyond anyone's belief. So um, really good work to the Theta team out there. Now, it said earlier, the complete list of Theta ecosystem partners is here, and I've clicked on this link, and here's everything that's currently being built on the ecosystem that Theta have initiated. Theta Wallet, Atomic Wallet, Metamask, Trust Wallet, the list goes on, Vault Swap, some of these you'll know, some of these you won't, um, some of these I haven't even heard of. Uh, the Theta Drop, we all know that for NFTs. Uh, Open Theta, Thetaverse, Metapass, Theta Lands, Replay, Theta TV, uh, which I sometimes post these videos to, Reward TV, which we'll talk about in a moment, and the list just goes on and on and on and on. Uh, it's quite, quite long at the moment. So um, Theta have got so many projects uh, being built on their ecosystem at the moment. I would be very surprised uh, if this was not a good investment uh, right now and in the future. Um, I'm certainly, as I said in previous videos, dollar cost averaging as much as I can at the moment um, to get the best buy I can uh, before everything takes off. Now, one of the uh, one of their uh, one of the projects built on the Theta ecosystem is Reward TV, and let's go and have a look at an article that came out regarding Reward TV. Um, I hope I don't butcher this guy's name, but I'm going to say Kurish Arvin. Uh, how do I pronounce that? Avran Apley is making the bet that his new decentralized streaming platform can run without ads or subscriptions. Instead, he wants to pay you in his own new cryptocurrency to watch the content. So this is uh, very similar to play to earn. This would be considered play to watch, I guess. Uh, last month, Reward TV 
allows users to earn crypto tokens as they watch and invest the currency back into playing content providers or buy non-fungible tokens, so NFTs, to support the creators. The streaming platform is available on the web and major platforms now, offering thousands of hours of free content, including Agatha Christie Mysteries, and then when there were none, and the Casper Van Dielen-led biopic James Dean Race with Destiny. The hope is to monetize Reward TV in the future through premium content and perks that viewers can unlock with their replay tokens or cash. So essentially what they're doing is they've built a network where you'll get rewarded in um, in their own uh, native uh, coin, their token. I actually don't know what that is. So I think it's called... Their token might be called Replay. I can't remember that this article actually listed what their token was. But you'll get rewarded in that. So in a sense, instead of waiting for an ad to appear on the on the television or a sponsor to be listed down below, um, none of that is required because the users themselves will be getting rewards for watching the movies or the news or whatever it is that they, they, they want to host. Um, the article goes on to say that a decentralized streaming platform that pays people to watch in the aim to create community-driven content platform. That's what the goal is of, um, of the ecosystem. The watch-to-earn model is similar to play-to-earn uh, models seen in gaming, which incentivizes users to play to unlock certain achievements, physical or digital and or digital goods, or other in-game rewards. For reward TV users, will be able to spend tokens to unlock gated content and pay for what uh, only for what they watch, whether it's minutes or hours, and content owners will also be able to create NFTs that grant access to premium content or other perks they choose. These work differently than streaming subscriptions that are a recurring cost. NF NFTs are a one-time cost for that digital asset. So to give you an example of what that might look like, they might release a movie on, um, on the network and you might purchase an NFT or get rewarded in, um, in their token coin with, and you've maybe collected enough token coins to buy an NFT on their blockchain and you might get to see behind the scenes um, trailers of the movie being made or interviews with the actors and things like that. So it could go into a whole, I mean, that's just a very quick um, synopsis of what it could look like. It's certainly going to be a lot bigger than that. The way we're going to monetize it is we're going to offer NFT gated content for premium content. So we're partnering with some of the premium and one tier studios and license holders. So a, a premium studio would, studio would be somebody like Warner Brothers, Paramount, I would imagine Fox possibly. Um, uh, and the NFTs are going to provide a lifetime access to full premium content on real movies. It goes on to say that making money by simply watching uh, has real power to it. These new economic incentives absolutely will fuel streaming consumption of the individual titles and ultimately expand audiences and build new content brands, but not necessarily because of the quality of the content. So what she's sort of getting at there is, well, the, certainly at the moment anyway, and I've had a look at the uh, ecosystem, while it's brand new, uh, and so you can certainly log on, create an account and watch, uh, watch movies on this platform, the content at the moment isn't that great. Um, so let's jump over to it now. And here's uh, some of the stuff that they're, they're, they're advertising at the moment. Let's see if I can go to another page here that might have better uh, a better um, description of what movies you can currently watch. Yeah, so you can see here that a lot of the stuff that's currently um, hosted on this uh, website on Reward TV, um, it's you know it's pretty old content. You're, you're looking at you're talking about some of the movies that might have been around in the 1950s, 1940s, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's got to start somewhere, but ultimately they want to get the platform right with some of the earlier content first before they go to the level one producers to say that we've got this platform. They want to be able to prove that it works um, and um, I mean, geez, some of these, <laughs> some of these uh, movies I can remember watching as a kid. Uh, so um, they've certainly got a, a string of um, older things happening here, but it will change. And again, with everything, it takes time for that to happen. Oh, they've got let go on here. Okay. Finally, with uh, the last article today for Theta is that Theta, the 3.4.0 upgrade to go in effect on September the 28th, which is three days away from now, 
which is preparing for the meta chain by adding wrapped theta and staking via smart contracts. Now I've spoken about this uh, meta chain in the past. Um, there will be, if you go to my YouTube channel and just search under the list of videos, there will be something there regarding the theta meta chain 4.0, which will come out. Uh, but the update to 3.4.0 will go in effect uh, in a couple of days time. Theta goes on to say that they're pleased to announce that Theta 3.4.0 will soon go into effect via the hard fork in late September. This upgrade enables the support for Wrap Theta, which is W Theta, as an TNT token, a critical prerequisite to the launch of the Meta, uh, Theta Meta chain, as well as staking Theta T Fuel to Guardian nodes and Elite Edge nodes from smart contracts. This release will perform a hard fork to enable the new features at block height 1728. 5755 at approximately 7 p.m. on the September the 28th, 2022 Pacific time. Now, this is really important uh, for those that are following me on the channel. If you and you've got a validator node, if you are running a validator node, it is mandatory, which uh, I do, and you can sometimes hear my fans burning in the background because it's producing or, or validating stuff for Theta. Uh, if you are running a Theta uh, validator node. It is mandatory to update this to this new version, otherwise it will fall out of sync after the hard fork. To upgrade your node or review the 3.4 source code, check the following page. Now I'll have the I'll have this article listed in the links below, but I'll also separately tag and have this um, this uh, you can see it here this uh, link here um, to that for those that are running validator nodes. It will be pretty important to get that right before that happens. This update is critical in that it permits Theta to be used in Theta-based dApps, so decentralized apps for DeFi or within the MetaMask wallets among many other use cases. It also means that staking Theta to Guardian nodes or T-Fuel to Elite Edge nodes can now be done through smart contracts, which makes pooled staking easier and allows users to create a wider variety of staking products. Additionally, for the upcoming uh, MetaChain upgrade, Wrap Theta is needed to register a subchain and to post Theta collateral for the subchain validators. Altogether, it means greatly increased utility for the Theta token and for the ecosystem as a whole. So massive developments happening this year. As I said earlier, look for projects that you want to get into. If you've got some spare cash, um, you really want to have a look at projects that are doing a lot of development. Even though the market has dropped significantly since November last year, you want to have a look at projects that have uh, maintained their course uh, and that they're still striving to develop and um, change the world for the better. Theta is obviously on the top of my uh, list of um, awesome projects to look at. That's it for today, guys. Um, again, if you like this content, please give us a thumbs up uh, and smash the like button. And obviously, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe and uh, you'll be notified when I release my next video, which will happen in about two or three days' time regarding other crypto news. Uh, until I see you then, if you've got any comments, certainly drop them in the link below and um, I will uh, get back to you. Uh, until then, uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Cheers.